Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from EasyAutomation.com and welcome to another video from Easy Automation. And today we'll be talking about dynamic Selenium Grid support in Selenium Grid 4 along with the video recording option. So this is a new feature which is yet to release to the public. It is still in the beta state, but we are gonna see how it actually works and what exactly is this dynamic Selenium Grid and how it can be incorporated to use along with the Selenium video recording. So the dynamic Selenium Grid 4 can start a Docker container on demand. That's why it is called as dynamic Selenium Grid. This means that it starts a Docker container in the background for each new session request and the test gets executed there. And when the test completes, the container gets thrown away, pretty much like a ephemeral container, which always creates for you every time you need it. And then once the test execution is done, you can just throw away the particular container, which is really, really cool. So this way we can also ensure that we could able to test our applications in different containers, completely isolated, but still in the same network. And we can also ensure that our tests are running in isolation instead of just running on the same Selenium node, which is gonna be running different browsers for us. And this is gonna be really, really interesting and very helpful for us to do a very scalable testing for us. And also, as I told you, the dynamic Selenium grid also supports the existingly newly created video recording option, which is still in beta state. And it is also supported for the dynamic grid execution as well, which is quite cool. So you could able to run all the test execution along with the dynamic grid. And it is also going to create a video for you once the recording is done. So let's see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to my Edge Chrome browser right now. So you can see that this is the Selenium HQ page for the Docker Selenium. And you can see that they have the details available over here. And the one of the most important detail is the video recording, which is still in beta state, which I was just showing on the screenshot on the slide there. And this is the dynamic grid, which actually tells you how you need to configure the dynamic Selenium grid to run the ephemeral containers for you on demand. So basically you need to create a config.toml file which is gonna be holding the tag like Docker, and then you're gonna be giving the config over here. Then this config is gonna tell which particular Selenium grids node that you are gonna be using. So this is the Selenium Firefox node, this is the Chrome node, and this is the Edge node. And then this is the browsers, basically, you need to specify that. And then you also need to specify the Docker's host internal 2375, which is nothing but this one. So if you go to the Docker, you will see that there is an exposed daemon on the TCP localhost 2375 without TLS. This will be unchecked while you install the Docker for Windows in the machine, or if you're using the Docker for Mac, then you will be seeing that this particular uh, checkbox will be disabled. So you need to enable this and you need to reboot the Docker uh, for Windows. And once you have done that, it is good to go for you. So this is the only thing that you need to start basically so that you can able to use this particular feature that you are seeing over here, because this is required for you to talk with different containers and so that the Selenium can does the operation that we are looking for. Uh, and then we also have this video image option, which is nothing but this guy that you are seeing over here. So you can just set this video image is equal to Selenium video colon FFMG, this one. So this is basically another image which is used by these containers configurations to run. And yes, this is what is the only configuration that you need to do. And they have some other configurations over here. If you have the host sitting in different machine, then you need to give that host and the port number. But because the host which is nothing but the Selenium hub and the nodes are going to be in the same machine, my demonstration, I don't really have to uncomment this. So this is the only configuration that you really require. And once you have this particular configuration, you can then start running the Docker node, something like this. Like you can just create a network for the Docker grid, and then you can run this pretty much exactly like how we discussed about the Docker Selenium grid over here, I think we discussed on last year, uh, we talked about this Docker Selenium. So this is exactly what you need to be doing over here as well, so that you can set the uh, event bus for the publishing port and the subscriber port and all those things. This is exactly gonna be reminding the same. But if you want to spin up everything all together, you can use their helpful compose file that they have for the Docker grid, which is very, very helpful for you to get started with. And I will show you all these things, how it actually works in the Docker compose world. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna show you this particular configuration file that we just saw over there on that particular page. So I have just copy pasted it over here without even a single line of code change. And then there is this Docker compose file. 
which actually is going to be of version 3 and there is a services which has the node docker so this is the node docker which is going to go and call this config to ml file which is this one and it's going to spin up all the different images which is sitting on this particular configuration so it's going to start everything within this particular node docker so they'll have a separate image which is then going to be responsible for you to call all the images over here within the particular container right and then this is the node setup and once you have the node setup done and then it is going to be used by the selenium hub so that you can connect these nodes into the selenium hub using these port numbers that you can see over here right so this is the only configuration that you are going to be giving over here on the docker compose file and the config.tivo ml file that's it once you have everything ready you can then start running your test and for this demonstration purpose to show the parallel execution in the grid support i'm going to be copying some of the code that i have already discussed in my course in udemy on the spring boot for selenium java for the parallel execution support both with web driver as well as with the remote web driver i'm going to be just using the same code that i have discussed over there but just that i have added an additional capability here called se colon record video as true so that you can also see that the video will be recorded along with the test execution that is going to be very very cool so this is the only thing which i'm going to be doing and you will see that it is going to run all my tests i think i have four tests over here all these tests are going to be running parallelly once i start executing it because i have already set the profile as i guess remote there so once i start executing it it's going to run everything parallelly on all the different containers at the moment you can see that we don't have any containers up and running and once i start the docker compose of up you will see that it is going to start running all the different containers for me i mean not every containers because it's going to be ephemeral it's going to start the hub and the node and then once i start the test execution sessions it is going to create different nodes for us so all you need to do to run the docker compose is pretty much exactly the same thing docker compose up and once you do the docker compose up you can see that it is going to set up everything for you like creating the network and then spinning up the selenium hub and also the selenium node docker so you can see that everything has been running and you will see within this particular uh, docker for windows it is going to show you that it is going to it has started the selenium hub and the node that's it these are the only two things currently spinned up it is not even running all the different nodes required for us to start executing for example chrome node firefox node or edge chrome node because those are going to be on demand for us and if i go to the browser this time and if i just go search for uh, or page open the page localhost 4444 ui.index.html file you will see that it is going to show us that i have the capability to run the tests on browser like chrome firefox and microsoft edge the reason being i have actually gave the configuration to support these three browsers and that's the reason the capability is showing all these three and the session at the moment is nothing because it's not executing anything very helpful for us over there so let's try executing the test and see how it actually works so now to execute the test all i'm going to do is i'm just going to run the test from the ide and once it executes you will see a lot of magics are going to happen basically once it is starts you will see that there are going to be like eight containers gonna spin up for us like four containers for running the four tests for us for every session and the other four containers are going to be the containers which are responsible for capturing the video recording options i mean it's like a one-on-one -on -one mapping at the moment for the video recording and that's why it is going to be creating like four other containers for you to run or capture the video recording for you from here so you will eventually see that them all going to be coming up there see that there is one container coming up uh, and you will see it is going to show you all the details see there is one more and two more so totally eight and let's go to the sessions you will see that the test is actually executing along with the video recording option so it is nice you can actually see they also show the uh, video recording options are going there and you will see that once the test execution completes one by one it is also deleting the containers for us because it's all ephemeral there we go i think the tests are fully completing so there are two running two running over here on the sessions pretty live update and there we go my test has got successfully completed 
and if I go to my test this time, you will see all the tests has got passed, which is cool. And let's go and see the video recording, which it has done. So if I go to my assets over here, because I have did the volume mapping over here on the assets, something like this. So these are, these are the four session which just completed and they all have the videos over there. So if I just reveal in the folder over here and there we go, I have the videos and if I kind of play them you can see that it is actually playing the test execution that happened on that particular instance of the container there we go the test execution got computed which is pretty cool so this is how you can see that we can make use of the dynamic selenium grid for along with video recording options in selenium grid setup using the parallel execution and once again, if you see this code, which is currently doing all the magic of running tests in parallel without any failures and also running tests so faster with the power of all these new features. And in fact, this whole code is written in such a way that it is in an enterprise grade mode so that it can be scaled up as much as possible. If you want to really learn about all these codings, you could go back to my course, Spring Boot for Automation Testing UI and Microservices. This course actually covers all the details of how you can start working with the Spring Boot and how you can write the industry grade code by understanding the Spring Boot itself from the complete basic. And then you can start writing the scaled up version of code that we just saw over here. And also you can learn how you could actually do the API testing along with the different option that the Spring Boot actually provides for you. That's what this whole course is all about. That's it guys, once again, Thank you for watching this video and hope you really like the new beta feature of Selenium 4 Grid Setup.